It's all for the cross. Therefore, my mother has to die. My wife has to die. My brothers and sisters have to die. No one wants that. But you're pushing us to it. You're leaving us no choice. We're asking, we're begging. The students up in Columbia, they ask. The brothers down south ask. The brothers in Latin America, the brothers in Africa, they're all asking. All they're doing is asking. Our fathers ask. Our grandfathers ask. The presidents of our universities, our colleges, had to go to your back doors to beg that their children be given just enough money so that they could be taught something to live off. And, and yet still, they ask and ask and ask, and you refuse to give them anything. Now, we're, all, we're just about out of patience. We're not going to ask anymore. The news media says that it's only the young that are militant, only the young that want this and want that. Okay, but we're 40% of the black population now. But we were a year ago, and still yet we're climbing. Before long, we'll be 50%, 55%, then we'll have the command. We're not going to take it. We're not going to take sitting in, in rotten parks and, and, and in places that just aren't fit for living. We're not going to take it. There's a limit to a man's patience, and everyone knows it. God, Christ, heaven, everyone knows that what we're asking is not a million dollars. What we're asking for is humanity. We're asking to be allowed to live like human beings. And God, you tell us that this is too much to ask. You're sick. You're definitely sick. How can you tell me that it's too much to ask to be a human being? Square helps think of every kind of business. Sign up in minutes at square.com. Offer. All right. So you heard it. That was the uh, brother Ben Crump from the 1960s um, interview. Um, it didn't say which uh, media outlet he was interviewing, so you can do your research on that. Who was the conducting, what, what television station was conducting the interview. But um, it's still true to today. It's 2022 and it's still true. So to unpack this um, slaughter, can't even call it a murder, it was a slaughter. This white man reconnoitered a grocery store in the black community and formulated a plan to go and kill black people. The only people that survived the onslaught were Caucasian people. I mean, he didn't shoot up the whole store. If he had his way, he could, he would have. He made plans to, you know, kill more of us. Um. I'm going to say something, and I'll probably, if I could actually um, see, I'm on an audio platform, I'm going to get a couple of side, I probably, I know I'll be getting some side eyes from what I'm about to say, but it wasn't all the way uh, racist per se. It wasn't 110% racist. This is um, this is like population control at its finest. Black people procreate at a higher rate than pretty much everyone on the entire planet and powers that be that are 
for the better part, white supremacists, white extremists, people that um, study eugenics. This alarms them. And they want to do something about it. So if it wasn't this, um, it would be some type of new sickness or illness that affects only us. They're already putting stuff in our food. They're already putting stuff in our water. They're already putting stuff in the very air we breathe that specifically attacks our cells. By our, I mean black people. So, what do we do? What do we do? So, I really don't even call it white supremacy. I call it white insanity. Because their logic is insane. It's not rational. It doesn't make business sense. It's just insane. There can never, ever, ever in a million years be a pure Aryan race because every person on the planet contains everybody's DNA. Everybody has a percentage of the African gene. So their goal to have a pure Aryan race is never going to happen. And they know it. Now what does this mean for all of this? This means that as the old Sam Cook song, a change is going to come. A change is going to come. And it's not going to be the change that you're used to. It's going to be, you know, a different change. It's going to be the change to where we're in power. So, in essence, what I'm saying, the reason why they did this, this is, I got to get them before they get me mentality. That's what that is. See, all over the world, but especially here in America, you got to say especially, white equals rights. This is why um, white people don't want black people living next door to them. They're not scared. Of, they're not worried about, you know, your booming system. They're not worrying about all them small little nuances within your culture, the rap and, the, um, you know, the twerking and all that and the food. They don't care about none of that. You living next to them crushes their spirit. That's their cup of coffee in the morning to wake up white, to be, wake up white and right. To know this whole system is designed to accommodate you. So to have a black neighbor that symbolizes Oh shoot, there goes the neighborhood. Because no matter what's going on in a white person's world, their comfort, their cold comfort is, well, it could be worse. I could be black. You see that sick mentality? They're afraid 
that we're going to do to them what they've been doing to us since nearly the beginning of time. And this is something I say over and over and over again on my platform about the true nature of people. And like I already said, I already did the disclaimer when I started talking to, you know, white people, Caucasian people for me saying that. I'm not saying all white people, but at the core of your being is that savage, is that conqueror. They have this just deep rooted need to conquer something. And the messed up thing about it, they don't got to conquer anything from us because we give it to them. Every single thing we've ever created, we gave to them. But they want to steal it and they want to take it. We gave them the blues. We gave them country music. We gave them the blues. We're giving them hip hop. They ain't never gave us nothing. So, yeah, that's the true nature of who they are. And to paraphrase um, comedian Godfrey, he said, you know, something along the lines of the Negro shock. Why is this shocking to us? Why was it, it was sad and heartbreaking, but why are we acting like this is something brand new? They've been doing this. They were literally doing this all summer long right before Biden got in. Know why? Because it's an agenda. And the agenda is on. See, they want to trick us and believe us. You know, the war is really over in um, the UK, but the war is here. It never stopped. The onslaught war on um, black America is right here on this soil. It's right here on U.S. soil. Now, black people, how do we, violence is never the answer. How do we survive this? By being prepared. See, now instead of chilling and partying and, you know, fitting the uh, planning vacays, you should be getting in a state of readiness, getting your mind ready. Getting your body ready. Getting your finances in order. And anything I say on my platform, um, I'm talking to myself as well. You want to be, you know, really careful listening to people that don't include themselves in, you know, whatever it is they're talking about. You know, when they say things to make, you know, stand on a pedestal looking down like, nah, when I'm saying that, I'm talking about me too. So anything I say on my platform, I mean, I'm included in that. So when I say we as a people, I also mean myself. We need to be getting in um, a state of preparedness and readiness. You need to right now, and I'm not advocating violence, I'm just telling you what's been the transpire. I'm shocked telling you the chain of events that's fitting to transpire. Like, so the guy went in there, he had body armor. This is the thing about these white supremacists. They plan their moves 10 chess moves ahead. See, like the government, they know what you're going to be before you know what you're going to be, before you figure out what you want to be in life. They already got you programmed into what they want you to be in life or what they expect you're going to be in life. 
But um, being blacktastic is weird.